I'm super excited to finally release Hindsight, the looping and stutter engine that I've built for Ableton Live. I'm going to cover in this video what's changed since the first one. So if, uh, if you missed that, go check it out. I'm going to blow through the basic functionality pretty quickly as I move on to all the new cool stuff like hardware integration. Let's go ahead and capture a quick loop when you talk about what's changed since the last video. So this section down here allows you to modify the loop length and the offset and the start position. So with that on and length set to 16, offset at 0, it will play the original loop. If we set that to 1, it will just be a 16th note or a 16th of the entire loop length. And you can place that shortened loop anywhere within the full loop. And you can select length anywhere between 1 and 16. So with these odd values used in conjunction with the stutter sequencer, you can get some cool polymetric stuff going on. Over in the stutter engine, there's an option to spread the stutters. Now let's turn that up to 100 so we can hear it. Every time you grab a new slice of audio, it will be placed somewhere else in the stereo field. And with auto grab turned on and either dynamic or random enabled, every new slice will be somewhere else in the stereo field. There's a knob down here called length scale, and this shortens the loop. So it gives you some options for some rhythmic variety. And the panning and the length scaling are included in the sequencer, so let's go ahead and open that up. The first thing you might notice is the length and the offset parameters in the upper left. This allows you to shorten the sequence, play it anywhere within the loop. Each sequencer has a global step control, so you can set the value of all the steps at the same time. And it also has, each sequencer has a random button that will randomize the sequence every time it wraps back to zero. In the speed sequencer, there's an option for semitone transposition. Uh, the length sequencer is, uh, it allows you to do some things similar to ratcheting in, in analog sequencers, so that can be very cool. And of course we have the panning. Allows you to throw the sound around and get some cool spatial stuff happening. So that pretty much wraps up what has changed in the software itself. We can get around to talking about hardware integration. So once you have Hindsight loaded on a track, you can select a compatible control surface, push one or to push two. So once you have Hindsight loaded on a track, you can link it to a push or push to by using this menu. I have a push to, so let's select that and then define a slot. You can put it in one of four places on the push. And everything that is not being controlled by hindsight, the functionality, the default functionality of the push will remain. So it's a pretty small footprint on the device itself. To enter and exit hindsight mode, you hold the select button, the user button will dim, and then you can freely toggle in and out of that mode that. So let's get the loop that I captured earlier playing back and we can show you some of the things you can do. So the default behavior is a uh, kind of like a, a you can jump anywhere within the loop. This lower scene button is used to control recording and playback so it's flashing red right now which means that it's ready to arm. 
and after the length defined by the jump sequencer menu here, it'll start playing back. Another press will uh, revert to normal loop playback, and then another press will continue the sequence. Holding it will clear the loop, revert to normal playback, or clear the, the sequence, revert to normal playback, and arm for another recording. The upper scene button turns looping off and resyncs the loop playhead to the record head. This is useful uh, for chopping live incoming audio, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later. If you hold select, it exposes some momentary controls. This top scene button will revert the loop playhead back to the record head, but not stop looping. So if you somehow get off from the one, you can instantly jump back in sync with, with where you are in line. Uh, the bottom button turns gate and through mode on. In gate mode, this will only play through the slice. It won't continue looping. Pressing the shift button will turn stutter mode on. This allows you to trigger the stuttering engine from the push. And how this works is one press will turn it on, pressing another pad will continue grabbing but at a different point, uh, pressing the same pad again will turn it off. And if these are enabled, um, right now I have that overridden with this button, but if it's flashing it means that these where you press will not have an effect on where the slice is grabbed from. It'll obey the rules of the sequencer. If you have that solid, you're overriding that you can freely grab from anywhere. The top scene button will resync the record head and loop head back to live on the next 16th note. So if you've done some tempo changes or meter changes or something and the record head isn't lining up perfectly, you hit that and you can resync to the one. So the push features are great for manipulating a loop you've captured, uh, an instrumental or vocal loop or anything like that, but they're also great for processing incoming audio uh, from clips and, and other things. So I'm going to throw another instance of hindsight onto my master track. Uh, throw it for the compressor. And when linking instances to the hardware, you want to make sure that uh, the display is always not in hindsight mode. So let's select push two, let's select slot two, let's find a color we like. Uh, let's go orange and yellow, that looks good. And let's actually enter hindsight mode. Now you can see we have two uh, loops going. And this allows you to do live beat chopping. where this button comes in you can do chopping and stuff and then hit that to just start passing the original audio resync everything and then you're ready to keep chopping the gate mode can be really cool when when using incoming audio stuttering thing too. more thing that I'd like to uh, hopefully quickly get through but uh, the sequencer can also be displayed on the push so this can give you some 
excellent hands-on control right from the hardware. So if you have the track selected that hindsight is on and you enter hindsight mode and then hold select, the note button will dim, press that, and now we have our sequencer displayed onto our push. Let me just turn this to eight so this will just be on one page. And now you can see that we can manipulate the sequence right from our push. Um, you can scroll left and right on your view of the sequence with these buttons. You can scroll up and down of your view with these buttons. Uh, holding select will bring up momentary controls, while in step edit mode this will be your global edit. Select also brings up your, you can select any of the five sequences. We have panning, or amplitude, speed, length, and panning. Um, when holding shift, you have reset, random, and emit the sequence. You can quickly just scroll through and randomize things, which is... Getting back to normal is, is no more than a, a click away. Um, I really like that actually. Let's, let's dial that back. There we go. Um, and along with the sequencer running, you can also record uh, loops if you turn persistent looping on here and go back to chop mode you can hear the loop running underneath let's turn gate on What is great about this stuff is that you can now record into this if you want to and kind of totally replace the vibe. Turn the scale down so we're kind of replacing the loop as we go. this you know do a, a sequence on all the incoming audio from the session too i just selected the master track so this will display our uh our master sequence find out where the snares are turn you know looping and well this this is constantly updating from the, the session so if we trigger some new loops
So I hope that gives you a good overview of what hindsight is capable of and uh, how you can interact with it. Um, it is available now. Uh, there's a link in the description. There's uh, included with that download is full documentation. There's some known issues, so that'll you can you can read about those there and um, a more thorough description of operation of and what all these parameters mean and and different ways to use the device. So. Thank you so much for uh, all the interest that I've gotten from the few things that I've shown in the past. And don't hesitate to get in touch with any features or bug reports or anything like that. Thanks again.